All right, so in this video, I'm going to be covering basically everything I can remember to tell you that I know about twinking, specifically as a balance druid. Um, and I meant to make this video before my sub ran out, but I didn't. So instead of being on my actual character, I'm just going to be going through some random recordings I have. This is very informal, and there's probably going to be some good information in here if you can sit through it, but it's... I have nothing planned pretty much. I'm just going to go over whatever it comes up at the top of my head. And so to start with, this is before a game. And this is what my inventory looks like. Um, these rocket boots here, these four are the unenchanted. I bring between four and six, but on this character, four um, unenchanted pairs. Um, because if you have an enchanted equipped pair, this is my other enchanted pair and it breaks it'll break the unenchanted ones in your first bag before it breaks your equipped ones so for my enchanted ones to break i have to break more than four of them in one game and it replaces every game that way you don't have to enchant your rocket boots every single time they break which would be insanely annoying um this food right here is just to take gives you a buff tasty it's just to look more impressive just an extra buff on your bar for fun also to frustrate people that don't like consumes Mm -hmm. oil of immolation this thing resets your swing timer so it's not very good but i think it is off the gcd it doesn't do very much damage but particularly when there's like a lot of people around you like when fc'ing it could be useful in some cases um this is a weight stone the heirlooms can't get um, much for like weight stones and sharpening stones on them but this is a rough one i think the rough one can be applied to um your heirlooms so i put three of those on every game on my int staff my heirloom one-hander and my main weapon the staff grand staff of jordan um this is the necklace in case you run out of the consumable necklaces or you just don't want to spend as much on a game because it's like lost or something and then some consumable necklaces here i think i usually bring three of the spell power ones and then one of the tanking one <clears throat> um deviate fish okay if you didn't know deviate fish are really 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 good um they have a 10 second cooldown it's not shared with anything they have a few different effects um but the important one is an instant heal for about 350 health so if you ever really really want to stay alive start spamming these sometimes it'll save you there's also a really small reju if you can get mm. scrolls so at the start of the game, you're going to get most buffs besides agility from people on your team. So like stamina, it's going to be from a priest most likely. But when you res, there's not going to be a priest around you every single time. So you got to have stam scrolls to buff yourself with stamina. Um, and this is a shadow protection potion. Um, you can pre-pop shadow protection potions just like you could in vanilla if you played vanilla. They only last two minutes, but if you time them correctly in the starting room, you can have them for the first fight. Um, the same goes for, I believe, these. These are either fire protection potions or magic resistance potions, but I'm, I'm talking about the magic resistance potion. Those last three minutes instead of two minutes, so right before you accept a queue to a game, you pop one of these, and then you start the game with, like, 50 spell res? Whatever it is, it's pretty good. Wild Vine Potions, if you're playing a caster, obviously you need those. Those are your biggest pot, both for health and mana, pretty much. Um, Cat's Eye Elixir is an extra consumable. It does almost nothing. You don't really need to use it, but if you want to, you can. Okay, Slammers, you're just a noob if you're not using Slammers. They're very important. You get them from Black Rock Depths. Um, they're pretty hard to use. Um, my Slammer uh, Macro is use Sulfron Slammer and then stop casting. So every time I use a Slammer, I press it twice because if you didn't know, um, when you use more than one Slammer, your character self-stuns themselves. They start casting an ability that will self-stun themselves for three seconds and you can stop casting it. So every time I Slammer, I press it twice to stop casting on the, uh, the self-stun. Um... This right here is a flame deflector. Um, you have my sapper thing here. Doesn't It's not very obvious, but this is actually a macro. The sapper hurts yourself, right? So one item you can use to prevent it from hurting yourself is a flame deflector. Flame deflector, I don't think it shares a cooldown with anything. 
just pre prevents like 400 fire damage. It's really good if you're FCing, because then when somebody sappers you, you don't take any damage. It's also good to just build into your sapper macro because your sapper hurts yourself. And so usually you would just want to be able to flame deflector, keep yourself alive, prevents the self damage from sapper, at least most of it. It still hurts yourself sometimes, especially if it's self crits, but um, it basically makes sapper not hurt you. Uh, da, 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 da. This thing is just a picnic basket. You could just set it up in an area. It's just a seasonal thing. It's just for fun, pretty much. Um, this is a gnomish harm vengeance belt. This is for when your gem studded leather belt is on cooldown. You can use this. Uh, I recommend pre popping this actually um, because it lasts 10 minutes and it's very hard to remember to pop. And I think it triggers GCD. I, I don't remember exactly, but I always pre pop this. Um, ornate spyglass this is actually an important item for a Rathi Basin. Also decent for Warsun Glitch. Um, it zooms in, but the important thing is it increases the draw distance or like targeting distance and render distance of the game. So particularly on a Rathi Basin, if you're protecting like Lumberyard and you want to go look at stables, um, if you just look there, you're not going to see the players that are there. But if you zoom in with Ornate Spyglass, they'll draw in and you can actually see what's going on in stables. Very, very good for pug games that have bad communications. Um, it's also fringe useful in Warsaw and Gulch as well. You can like stand on the backside of roof and like try to target somebody by using it, looking at their base. Um, these mana biscuits, these are the PvP food. You need these as a caster, otherwise you're going to be completely useless because mana is a huge issue in Wrath of Lich King because there's mounts and there is no drink walking. This is Dartle's Rod of Transformation. Not very important, but it can hide stuff you're wearing, what class you are a little bit, make it a little bit harder to tell, for people to tell what's going on. It breaks as soon as you like take damage or something, so it's super minor, but I think it's worth holding. Uh, this um, Goblin Jumper Cables XL in Wrath is not unequivocal, and it's quite good. It reses in like three seconds, so theoretically, say like you're pushing on offense and you have like a warrior or a rogue that dies and you drop combat, say, with Shadow Melt, you can jumper gave them really quick before they take their res, and they get back, they band-aid, and they're back at full HP, ready to go on the push again without having to run across mid. So I rarely use that, to be honest. It's pretty hard to use because you have to be out of combat. Um, it also fails sometimes, and it's also hard to communicate, especially with pugs, that you're going to res them. Um, I have a macro that attempts to whisper them, but it only works under certain circumstances. Uh, this battle standard, uh, you're just bad at the game if you don't have this. This is an insanely good item. It shares a cooldown with like uh, Healthstone, but you can pre pop it and it gives like everyone around you like 800 HP or something ridiculous. It has 1500 HP itself, which is a really, really good item. You just buy it from the um, Champions Hall. Um, mortars, when you use a mortar. This is, I don't know if it's a portable bronze mortar or goblin mortar, but I'm talking about goblin mortar. When you use a goblin mortar, it has a chance to backfire, and that backfire is an AoE self and ally stun, but it's a buff, so you can just right-click off the buff, and so you could put that in, in all every single like spell macro you have, or just its own like macro, maybe put it in your like, stop casting or something, and just slash cancel or a goblin mortar or something. I forget what the actual words are. But if you self stun if you stun yourself with Goblin Mortar, you can just cancel it and you should build that into like every macro ever. Um the portable bronze mortar, you can also make a macro to like um instantly cast it at your cursor so that you don't have to click an extra time since usually when you're using a PBM instead of something else, um portable bronze mortar. Um you just want it to be fast to get the stun, so the macro helps with that uh are these swift boots no these are not swift boots these are nature's spell damage boots i don't think these are bis but um if you didn't know thorns scales with spell power and so you want to have a thorns set which is just maximum nature spell damage and spell power to make your thorns on all what it pre-game thorns buff hit for as much as you can on your whole team 
Um, it's quite significant. So I worth I think it's worth dedicating like some inventory slots to a thorn set. Obviously, as a balanced druid, you're going to be doing a lot of different stuff, and your inventory space is very limited. Um, speaking of which, make sure you have the biggest bag that the game allows you to have, which uh, I think as of this patch is still just 20 slots. As you can see, I have all the 20 slots and then the backpack. Since this is a classic WoW, not real of a real Wrath of Lich King, um, we have extra four slots if you attach an Authenticator. It's a pain in the ass, but if you if it's your like main account, your main like Twink account, I think it's worth it to get those four bag slots. Um, what else do we got here? There's like some stamina items here, some tanking items. Uh, I think that's about all I want to cover for that. So let's check over some pre-game stuff. Uh, okay, so... Here, look at my party on the left. My party is a 66 mage, 56 priest. This is a 44 warrior, I think, and an 80 druid. These are buffs that you have to be in a party to give and get. Um, so when you queue for a battleground in a group, you're not able, like a group of like 39s, you're not able to get some of the buffs that you could get if you're solo queuing. So when you are solo queuing, make sure you get all of the buffs you can. And those buffs are dampen or amplify magic in this case we're going to be using amplify magic because we are a balanced druid not an fc druid amplify magic significantly increases the healing we do on ourselves um it also increases the damage we take from spell stuff but it doesn't really matter the, the heal is really big um the priest gives fear ward i believe you have to be in a group for the warrior gives battle shout which the battle shout you can get three set t2 from bwl to increase the attack power by like 18 or something. And then you can talent and glyph it for the duration to be up to six minutes. Um, the priest can spec into power and fortitude. Uh, I think there's like a spirit thing. Um, and then the mage, mage, I don't think has any glyphs or anything. Um, worth noting though that these buff alts need to be one rank above the level, the rank you could get at that level. So um, you get one higher tier of power word fortitude if you get it from a buff alt rather than a 39. Um, so make sure you level up your priest buff alt to like 46 or whatever, 44, whatever you get the next power word fort and divine spirit and shadow protection. Um, and make sure you also talent into it. So you're getting the maximum amount of your buff alts that you can. Uh, uh, the druid, you want to be level 80 and in raid gear if possible. Because, like I said earlier, thorns scales with spell power. So you get a ridiculously strong thorns buff if you have an 80 buff alt druid. Um, and there's a talent for that. Uh, there's no glyph. And you just want as much spell power nature. Well, I guess at 80 it's just spell power in your gear as possible. That'll make your thorns hit for a couple hundred, which helps deal with the rogues, at least for the first life or the first like seven minutes of the game. And a little bit with hunter pets as well. And maybe warriors, if warriors are relevant at all. Um... And to be able to do, there's more buff alts than this. These are just the ones you have to have in your group. So obviously you get like the standard buffs, like Arcane Intellect, Powered Fortitude, all the ones that you can do outside of group as well. And there's more outside of group as well. So you want two or three Paladins because you want Kings, you want Sanctuary because Sanctuary in this, in Wrath, gives you Stamina and Strength, I think. So Kings, Sanctuary on everybody. And then you want Wisdom or Might. Um... If you have a really good battle, battle shout alt, I would probably recommend that over might, but you can go might as well. Uh, wisdom you can talent into. Um, and then... Uh, is that all the buff alts? Oh yeah, and then to switch, be able to switch between them, you want them all on an SSD because you got to load quickly. Uh, make sure you disable as many add-ons on those buff alt characters as you can so they can load in really, really quickly because... 
the faster you can buff up, both the more time you have to prepare before a game and you know gives you a little bit of leeway. Because you only get a minute and 45 before you have to take the queue. Um, you just want to be able to load in quick so you can get through all these buffs really quick. Um, and then make sure your level 80 drops a fish feast. Um, fish feasts are really, really cheap, insanely powerful buff. You can share it with other people um, if, if you join a party with them. Super, super good. Make sure you get that. Um, I think that's basically it for the pre-game. If you're joining a game and you have a theory that it is a game in progress and you might run into some NEB people, you can also power and shield yourself and renew yourself. And as you're going in, you can regrowth and rejuve yourself. That way you walk in with a lot of hots. And so if somebody's right there while you're loading, you're not going to just instantly die. Um... Yep, so you buff out yourself, you get in, and so this this game is, I think, a really easy game. This is just some random, random-ass twink guild that is just, like, beating pugs. Um, but let me see what I can cover here. So this thing on the left here, my map is bugged. I have to zoom out and zoom in to fix it every game because I never got that set up properly, but it's nice to have a quick... Um, at a glance view that you don't have to pull up your whole map for to see where people are on your on your team. Um, my, my fucking UI is a little scuffed here, but you, know, you have battleground targets for both your enemies and your own team. You mainly just need it for enemies, so you can click on all of them to see who's nearby or in stealth. Um, if you're able to click on them here, you know that they're not in stealth or far away. So you can get an idea of where they are. Particularly good for rogues. Um, so when you join the game, you got to type slash wa and enter to reload your weak ores because some of them don't load properly at the start of the battleground. So just typing a slash wa enter and then closing it will reset some of them. So like this graveyard timer. Uh, so a graveyard timer, obviously very, very important. This is one of the like, biggest basic skills you can have in Warzone Gulch is knowing when to die and when to kill because graveyard or res timer in this game is super, super low. Like 15 seconds for an average like res is like really, really fast, especially if you're on, like talking about defense where running across the map takes like 15 seconds compared to like running across the map, which is like a minute. So if you kill somebody at the wrong time, which is one second before they res, they res and they're immediately up. And you probably were fighting them for like a minute and you're like low health, low mana, and it'll take you a minute to recover and get ready for another fight where they're already running across the map at full HP ready to go. So sometimes killing people at a bad time can be bad. So you wait until after the timer goes and then they get a full 30 seconds on their res. Similarly, if you are about to die, you see that ahead of time, and you either stall long enough to get this timer lower, so you're wasting the opponent's time, or you stop healing yourself, stop trying to stay alive, and you just die, and then you die and you get a quick res. Um, the other thing this is good for is the resing. It gives you a number of how many people on the opponent's team are currently about to be resed. This is very good for if you're trying to run a route like through the Horde graveyard, and you don't want somebody to fight you there, you can tell exactly when you have an opening to go. Um, similarly, when, when, you're, when you're picking the flag, you can run out um, through graveyard if you know nobody's resing, and if it's like three seconds to res and it says zero, you can run out there and then nobody will res, and then you can keep going for 30 seconds. You won't have anybody like spawning on you, you won't have anybody spawning behind you and catching up with mounts, and you also won't have anybody spawning, spawning in front of you. Um... So I have a weak ore here that tells me to use my consumable necklace if I have it equipped and don't have the buff and I'm in a battle round. Um, just a reminder to remind myself because sometimes I forget that. Oh, specifically, I forget it when I'm out of charges. Um, Want to buff up, use all your consumes, your battle guardian elixir, your cat's eye elixir. Scroll of agility is usually the scroll you want to use because usually you get your buffs from either your buff alts or someone else on your team. Then you want to swap into your thorns gear and your as a mage or as a as a mage as a balance druid. Uh, you also want to swap into your 
Make sure you swap like your your slots that aren't in your gear sets. So like your boots, your helmet, your trinkets, whatever whatever you don't have in your uh, gear set you want to swap to to get your most out of your thorns as possible. I don't really know why I didn't swap to everything here, but you see I have my one-hander on. The one-hander I mainly use just for buffing thorns. Sometimes I use it in games, but usually I go with, go with staffs in an actual game. This is mainly for buffing. Um, oh, it's because this game like started already. Like I joined late or something on this one. So you see in chat, I say, please check if the battleground later and assist all so we can mark. It's really nice to have marks on your team because marks show through walls. So you can see precisely where your team is easily at a glance if you're within range of them and there's not a thick wall covering them. Very good for coordinating both offense and defense. Try to mark as many important players as you can on your team. Um, and to do that, you need assist. So you should have a weak aura that assists everybody at the start of the game if you're the leader. And then if you're not the leader and you don't have assist, you should have something to ask for assist, which that's what I have to ask for assist. I have it just automatically post that 30 seconds before the game starts. Just so that people can be like thinking about it and I don't have to deal with it really. Uh, at the start of the game, somebody has to grab this speed. I think it ideally goes to like a more offensive class than Balance Druid. Because Balance is like half damage, half support. Um, but somebody has to take it because otherwise they just run and grab your frag flag for free. And you get Zerker buff. I saw a guy there. That's not me that was taking Zerker, which is good. Because then I can heal that guy and I'm not taking extra damage myself. See, I didn't assist all everybody there because somebody passed me leader, so I had to do it manually. So as a balanced druid, you can regrowth rejuve at the start of a fight before it begins to basically increase your health pool. Because if a fight breaks out like right now, then I have like an extra 2,000 health from my rejuve and regrowth ticking that I wouldn't have had had I not priestcasted those. Um, after you precast those as well, you can use the GCD to swap weapons. If you didn't know, you can swap weapons during GCD. So, so you cast regrowth and then rejuve is an instant cast. Then you instantly swap to your the weapon that has less intellect, which would be usually your Grand Staff of Jordan now, so you get more spell power while basically starting the fight at full mana. Um, you know, as Balanced Druid, obviously you're just getting some insect swarms, you're moving fires, healing some people, whatever it may be. And this is a super free, easy game, so I'm just running across. Picking because somebody has to pick. Picking is like the gold game. You don't win if you don't get the flag, so... Um, I realized that not many people were going to pick. We just had like a level 34 or something. I think this guy's actually a twink and it's just because of my slammer or something that he looks like level 34. I have no idea, but he sucks, whatever he is. Um, so he's about to die here. So you can stun people and pick up the flag while they're stunned and they won't be able to pick up the flag. If they are CC'd, they cannot pick up the flag. So I'm sort of trying to do that here. Obviously I dotted them, so they're gonna break out of the in-cap since bombs are in-caps in Wrath. But regardless of that, um, see I'm like kind of shaking my mouse around left and right here. If you didn't know that in, in the retail client, there's an interact with mouse over button and you can bind that to your scroll wheel. So you just spam scroll up, scroll down while moving your mouse around and it'll right click the flag for you as soon as he dies. Right, so these guys next to me are noobs and don't know how to pick up the flag, so as soon as he dies, I pick it up immediately. So I'm scrolling. Okay, and then... Here I fap, because obviously you need to be able to move. This game doesn't function without faps. And pretty soon here, I'll regrowth, rejuve, stay alive. What a bear form. And then, here I'm using one of my big cooldowns, which is Frenzied, Re Frenzied Regeneration. Which is a... Uh, there's a glyph that makes it increases all the increase all the healing you take. So not only is it self healing from like regrowth, rejuve, it's also other people and my like lifeblood, my health stone, my gemstone, leather belt, all that stuff. So I get some big healings here and somewhere in there also I think back here somewhere as I was walking up I swapped to yeah you see my health is four thousand now I think right here I swapped yeah I swapped to my um, my stamina, rocket boots, and my uh, green well armor, I believe. Uh, 
I have two pairs of rocket boots. One of them is boar speed and one of them is sure footed. And they're both right on top of each other right here. And so to tell which one I have on, I have different hotkeys for each. I have a weak aura that checks which enchant is equipped and tells me the hotkey for the current one I have equipped. Um, so then once I got out here, I could rocket boot if I needed to, but I procced a green whelp armor and I was getting some decent heals from my friends of regeneration and stuff. So I wasn't really too worried about it. Um, let's see. So rogues, you want a fairy fire. Fairy fire is a really, really good cooldown on rogues because they can't do like a lot of their good stuff when they're fairy fired. So especially when they're FCing, rogues are much, much worse at FCing when they're fairy fired compared to when they're not. I'm probably gonna just cast one more here. You can moon fire, and then if you want extra damage, you can throw a grenade, but mine's technically on CD. And also I know he's gonna die. Speed. So you hear there my character my voiceover said speed. That is a proc for my talent that gives you an increased cast speed. And you can also see the number of the duration remaining in the middle. That pops up as soon as the spell goes off. So you won't see the crit number um, until it actually like catch the projectile catches up to the target, but you actually know it crit already because you get the buff immediately. And so I have the announcer tell me that so that I know ahead of time that it's gonna crit him and kill him. And also lets me know that I just speed. have speed to cast things faster. So I knew he was going to die there because I cast a crit. I'm just going to hit him for 600. Uh, intercept is one of the best things to trinket in this game. If a warrior intercepts you from far away and you're fast enough, you trinket and then travel form, jump away. They are basically completely useless and almost completely dead. Like they got to use some pretty big cooldowns to handle a trinket travel form. It's pretty hard to do because you have to react pretty quick and I'm a fucking slow boomer, so. You see that I trinket and then travel form and run and what's he gonna do? He has nothing left because he already used intercept. Uh, I also slam her there just in case he was gonna rocket helm me. Just swapping to some more items here. All right, so jumps. Okay, so if you don't know how to do jumps, um, basically there's a way in this game where if you press two buttons within roughly one millisecond you will jump forward without moving forward first and it's quite hard to do under normal circumstances but there are some tricks um so if you find some spot where you just like get caught on a wall like say there this isn't the best example but you know how if you jump at an angle into a wall it'll like catch you on a random pixel that is a good spot to practice these wall jumps and the input is within one millisecond press first forward and then jump and so it's really hard to do just timing it yourself if you're pressing both buttons at the same time you can make the two buttons right next to each other for forward and jump so like some people use f1 f2 as an example to press them at the same time really close uh you can maybe get it like half the time if you just do it like that with a gaming keyboard but obviously half the time is not very good in competitive circumstances missing one jump could be a game loss so the way people do it is, number one, if you have a Razer product, you can just macro it. Um, most macro programs are not as good as the Razer Synapse one, particularly for this purpose. Uh, I don't know why, but most macro programs are not very precise and not precise enough to do this as an, in a macro form, and they will not be consistent unless you have a Razer product. Um, and you can only use the Razer macro system if you own and have a connected Razer product. So if you don't have that, which I don't because all my Razer products are broken and in closets somewhere where I don't ever want to see them again. Um, so I do all my jumps by hand. And the way you do them by hand is you get an old keyboard. So if you have a gaming keyboard, it pulls your inputs every millisecond, yeah, millisecond right? A thousand hertz compared to a cheap keyboard that you bought you know, on Craigslist or something or a garage sale for five bucks. They probably don't pull your inputs every millisecond because, you know, when you're typing in Word, you don't really need instant response or whatever, you know, on your button presses. So say they pull 125 times per second, 125 hertz, then you get eight milliseconds to press two buttons at the exact same time rather than one millisecond. And that is much, much easier to do than one millisecond. It's eight times easier and it is actually quite reasonable to just go bop with your hands and bop, hit both at the same time. And if you are lucky with the way that keyboard is designed, that 
which I assume most keyboards will do W before space if you're using default controls. Um, it will always, always, if you press them at the same time, press one key before the other. And for me on my cheap keyboard that I have is forward. So same with my side strafe and my both both side strafes presses that before space bar. So when I do jumps, I just go bop, bop, bop for forward, side, side jump. And I get it every single time pretty much unless I'm like really off that day and I'm like pressing them more than eight milliseconds apart. Um, and the way that I um, handle that because I hate playing on a cheap keyboard, cheap keyboards are awful to play with, is I just have two keyboards plugged in, both both in front of me, one in front of the other. And so anytime I need to do a jump, I just move with my mouse for a second and move my hand forward or auto run for a second, move my hand forward to the cheap keyboard and then do my jumps and then move back to the gaming keyboard. Um, and so once you have the wall jump technique down, everything is just lineups basically after that, all the skills from doing lineups and knowing how the jump mechanics work. Um, so the Alliance Graveyard Jump, super, super easy one to start with. You just get yourself all the way in the corner if you know how to do a wall jump. And then you wall jump out, and then you can do another jump. You line it up kind of like that, and then if you catch low, do another jump. Or if you just want to be consistent, do another jump. If you do it perfectly well, you can just press forward. It's much harder that way. Um, let's see, what, is, what else is going on here? Mm, I don't think there's anything else I really want to cover in particular from that video. I guess I can go over my callouts. So I have a lot of callouts over here. Communication in Battlegrounds is very, very important. Um, there are some weak wars that you can get that have some basic callouts, which is basically these two rows in the middle is what I started with. These stand for tunnel, flag room, roof, connector, ramp, graveyard, top of tunnel, relief hut or resto hut, zerk hut. Which, those are good callouts, good to have. You get to call out where the EFC is, but you definitely need more callouts than that, in my opinion. And so I add, for fun, Banana and Balcony, because I think Banana is worth having a callout separate from Roof. Same with Balcony, especially because some people actually sit on Balcony sometimes, so it's good, good to have a callout there. And so I'm just going to go over the rest of my callouts and what they are. So the most important one that a lot of these don't have is Cap. Uh, you want to have a button that you can press... Um, the reason I do these with a weak or, by the way, instead of a macro is to save your macro slots because you have a limited number of them for actual macros that do something that isn't just a chat message because you can do chat messages with weak ors. Right, so cap just puts in chat, cap, tells your team to cap, means you're about to kill the FC or something and you got to get on cap to cap the flag. Um, very, very important call out. Then we got 20 seconds, which is basically cap in 20 seconds. Like we're about to kill the FC, but we're not quite there yet. This is good for, say your FC is playing like a far from cap location, like top of tunnel. You can say, oh, we're gonna cap in 20 seconds. And they could like, from top of tunnel, they could go to like roof, for example. And roof is only like five seconds away from capping. Or they could just go, you know, to flag room or something, you know, they could start making the way there. Delay is, I made a call out like 20 seconds, to kill and then it's like oh actually changed our mind because they got a, like a big yield or something that we weren't expecting and then a fail is our push completely failed and it's going to be over a minute before we cap at minimum and so you should do whatever you can to stay alive wherever you have to go to stay alive uh re is a repick anytime your fc is going to die you got to pick up their flag again if they are not on the cap obviously if they're on the cap they win they get the cap but if they're not on the cap, you can just immediately pick up the flag if you're ready for it, and this tells your team to be ready to pick up the flag. Um, safe is... For me, that's me as the FC. And that lets everybody know that I'm safe, like in base, and that nobody needs to um, be like panicking to try to keep me alive. So like, if I'm low HP and I just want to fight and I'm confident there's nobody around and I, like, I'm not... I don't need my team to be running at me to save me. I say safe for now, and then my team knows they can go do other stuff, like go on offense, for example. Okay, on and off are, for me, I'm on the flag, on, on our flag cap, ready to cap so that they can return. This is important because um, better players will not immediately return the flag if it's, an e if it's a clearly one fight, and they can wait up to 10 seconds or something to return the flag, that way you get a guaranteed cap, and that tells them that you're on the cap, ready to be returned, and you get an instant point. And then off is, okay, I got off it for whatever reason. And if they return, they're going to get a repick if they're prepared. Um, 
mid is just EFCs in mid. For some reason, this callout doesn't have a mid callout, even though that's one of the most important things. Also, because mid is like mid covers a lot of callouts in mid that you know you could just look to see where the flag is in most cases. Um, standard is use a battle standard. Battle standard, as you can see here, is a long cooldown. So um, this is just a say chat to tell my defenders to use a battle standard if they have one. Um, because I, it's good, to, it's good to drop your battle standard before you know there's going to be a fight. So if you see like rogues coming up the tunnel and you're like, all right, in about 30 seconds, we're going to get into a fight and it might be a serious fight. You should throw a battle standard down. And so I have that to tell my teammates to do that. Um, drop please is for noobs that don't understand that strafing left and right is a uh, sign language for drop the flag. And so this says, please drop the flag and say chat for people that are like, running the flag that should not be running the flag or if you have like rocket boots or speed dash or something switch a spot to go cap it faster um drop boot this is me saying that i have speed to go cap it so they can drop it and i can run it in faster where is i don't know where the efc is tell me where he is uh dropped is efc dropped from roof pretty sure that's what that is yeah so uh, a standard location to defend from is roof, especially when you have a large defense of like four or five, six people. Roof is a really good spot to hold because it's a really giant choke. And then they'll drop down from roof. And it's very important that you communicate with the team when they drop. So I have a big all caps. They dropped from the roof. That's what that is. Um, so us and them. This is because people do not understand how to play Warson Glitch on a large like meta. Meta? What is the word? macro on a macro level people don't understand how to play the game so us is hey we need to help our fc focus on our fc we need 10 players focusing on our flag to like get our flag across for example and then them is hey our flag is doing just fine we need to go win the game go kill their flag carrier um and then defense is um uh defense is I, I believe it's our flag. Our flag carrier is in trouble and people who res should come defense. So people on offense that die or mid that die should come on defense and clear out the defense, um, clear out the uh, alliance base. Then offense is, for me, this call out is we need more people on offense or we're never going to win the game because Defense is way, way easier to play in this game than offense, and so people love playing defense, particularly noobs love playing defense, but you will never win if you have everybody on, on defense. So this is telling people that we need people on offense to win. And I also say their defense is strong with this because that'll maybe convince some people that we need some more on offense. Um, tree is the um, eastern side of the map. Um, there is a route back there that you can take from Alliance ramp. And so I have a call out that says they're on the tree side of the map, Eastern side of the map. It's just because oftentimes people run along the edge of the map, especially from Alliance base to Horde base, the tree side is very popular. So I have a call out for that. And then stump side is, um, obviously the stump, which is the Western side of the map. And then we have 20 a 20 H. So this is, so so there's an old, old strategy where when you go and pick the opponent's flag, you hide on their roof. So as an alliance player, I grab the horde flag and I hide on the horde flag roof. And then you wait there for a couple minutes for everybody to forget that you just picked up the flag and that you're in the horde base. Because right when you pick up the flag, everyone hears that sound and they're currently thinking about it. They're like, oh, we should go kill their guy that grabbed our flag. But if you wait two minutes on roof, because they're expecting you to come out tunnel, ramp, or graveyard, and they might forget about you, and then you can run out much quietly, much quieter. Um, and in modern day, this strategy has evolved a little bit to being a good stall strategy because if you can't get the base over to your side of the map, sometimes you can use the opponent's roof as a choke and defend just like you would on your roof, except on their roof. Now you're at a massive, massive disadvantage in the, being in the opponent's base. And so you have to do something. And so these two buttons explain the strategy for the two teams on how to progress the game. Because, especially because in most, in, in like the popular opinion, 
people think that holding roof is good. Like it's it, like if you have like a situation where you like barely repick, people think it's like for some reason they think it's like actually like the best play always to just immediately go roof and wait for your team to get over. Which oftentimes it's not. But especially given that people do, oftentimes it happens where there's 20 people in one base or the other base, and they don't know what to do. They just know that you're supposed to go roof, which sometimes you are, but oftentimes you're not. And then you just lose the game if you don't know what to do. So this explains. So when you have 20 people in the alliance base, you need to trust that your flag carrier is going to stay alive, and you need 18 or you need eight people on your team, roughly eight, to go for the hor the horde flag carrier, which will be on your roof, and you need to trust that your FC is going to stay alive, and you go kill the flag carrier, and then you cap. And then the 20 horde base is the opposite, where in, in this situation you your team would have 10 roof, and your t the opponent team would have you know 10 in their base as well. This, you need all 10 people to be defending your flag, and you need to be looking for a way out. If you just stand up there, eventually you will die. Like, they have such an insane advantage from the distance they have to walk across the map. You will lose if you just stand on the roof. Like, you can't hold roof for more than, like, two or three minutes. Like, it's just not going to happen. Their res time was too fast. Um, so you have to look for a way out. So that explains that we have to get our flag out. We need to focus on getting our flag out, look for an opportunity, and then go for it. People oftentimes don't understand these messages. You know, what can you do? I mean... Try to explain to them that you got to kill the FC if they're all in the alliance base. And then you got to get our flag out if we're all in the horde base. But anyways, um, escape is... I forget what escape is. Broke is sometimes my um, FC health weak or breaks. And so this just tells people that the, the thing is tracking the wrong FC health. Um, and so these O callouts, tunnel, O, o tunnel, O ramp, O GY... This is for saying which area your FC should run out. So like if you're coming up ramp and ramp is completely empty and it's a perfect way for them to go, this says, hey, you should come ramp or consider coming ramp because it's open. This is also good when you have 20 people in the opponent's base and you're looking for an opportunity for your FC to get out. You can call out, hey, the tunnel's open. We should go there. Okay, and then these ones, the G places are, I'm going this way with the flag. So we have go tunnel, going ramp, going GY, going roof. And so we have the same ones, tunnel, ramp, and GY are to get out of the opponent's base. Roof is to stall. And then fly is not for this bracket. That is for, well, I guess it could be for this bracket. It's only for hunters. It's mainly for level 79 bracket when you have rocket boots and you can go to ramp, jump up on the fence, and then fly across the map with the super rocket boots. That's what flying is. Hunters can do it with disengage. So if I was playing a hunter, I would use that. And then we have... Balance, which explains that I'm a balanced druid, not an FC druid. Uh, and these are past leader. One of them is whisper, one of them is just general. I realize I spent a long time on those callouts, but uh, I think they're important. So I'm checking the scoreboard here, and I do this often. And yes, this is partially like self-reflection to see how you're doing but it's also to learn stuff. Um, you can learn which players are good, which players are bad, both long-term and within the one game. Um, so the damage done, it's not a perfect metric, but it is probably the best metric. Same with healing done. The healing and damage are roughly one-to-one -one equivalent. Not quite, but sort of. Um, just gives you a good idea of who you need to be paying attention to, like who the big boys are. So like, if you're getting pushed up, like looking at this scoreboard, if I'm getting pushed up by like Obzizi and Looter Guy, you know, they only have 10,000 damage combined. And I, I've been capping a flag and I have 15,000. So I'm not going to be too worried fighting just those two, for example. Or maybe I, should, maybe I should use Yakuza as a better example. So like I know who the weak guys are, but if I'm getting pushed by Sam Cod and Fur and Pleb Coon, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be worried. I'm probably gonna be dropping off roof if they're both like coming up banana, for example, because I know those are the strong players in their team. Um, so it's worth it to check the scoreboard at least sometimes to see who the important players are, because even in high skill games, there is definitely a lot, 
of bad players and then some very good players. And so you want to pay attention to who's better and who's worse at the game. Um, so I'm drunk here from Slammer. When you're drunk, you could just hold right click and shake your mouse like a little bit left and right or back and forth. And that'll let you walk in a straight line while you have drunk. You can't auto run, which is actually a little bit of a deal sometimes, cause especially if you want to type something precise in chat. But it's worth it generally for the Slimer effect. Okay, and then that VOD was fucking awful. So let me see if I have something else that's a little bit better. Uh... All right, let's look at this one. All right, so let's talk about safe spotting. Safe spotting, there is a handful of safe spots that are still in the game somehow. Um, Blizzard, I don't know if they ban for them. I, I, th I think they do on extremely rare occasions, but you could basically think of them as not banning for these. Um, these should not be allowed, most of them at least. It's debatable which ones you consider to be safe spotting, which ones aren't. Some people don't think any of them are because, you know, everybody can get to these spots. It's just difficult. But, in my opinion, since so few people actually know how to do a lot of these, they should not be allowed. And especially this one in particular is extremely imbalanced. Like, the Horde base, already without this, is not, not like, super better than the Alliance base, but it's better than the Alliance base, for sure. Um, and then this is just an insanely powerful location. Obviously, Allison Swift is just a fucking moron and doesn't understand anything about this game. So he's fucking abusing them, of course. Um, let's see what's going on here. Warlocks, broken class. I don't know why people don't think Warlocks are insanely good they are. I report Allison here. Probably does not going to do anything, but why not? Um... I don't know if I really have anything to say about the Horde GY jump. It's hard. Practice it. Alright, so this jump I believe you can make just with your regular 8% um, boost from your boots. If you get up really close on the wall, on the ledge, and jump. Or you can use a swiftness pod or rocket boost or something to get here. Then getting up here, you just do some neutral jumps with some drifts. I'll turn this down so it's probably really loud. Do some neutral jumps with some drifts. And then once you get up high enough, you can do a forward jump, which is a wall jump. And then do some neutral jumps or some angled backwards walking to get to where you need to be and then jump forward there. It's pretty hard to do, but you should know how to do that if you play this game a lot. You should practice it because people will do this, especially in pub games. Um... What's going on here? Nothing too important. My team is just completely lost. I think this is a game where, like, our team was actually stronger than them, but... Oh, yeah, okay, so... So here, I have... An right here i have my uh two fc health bars and so allison swift is chilling i saw aviato get chunked here and so as soon as i finish typing i think i look up here and i realize aviato is taking damage so i click him to see what debuffs and stuff he has i see his kidney shotted and there's a hunter on him so theoretically this guy should be getting aimed shot and killed it, like very very soon so as soon as i realized that i check my map and see if anyone's going to repick I realize nobody's repicking, so I'm going over here to go repick. Right, but Allison Swift actually is awake this time for some reason, so he's ready to go cap. He faps, of course, really smart to do that. Um, and so he here is hoping they return so they get an insta cap. This is the likely correct play because Aviato is very likely going to die here. So I'm just in a DPS race here. So when I was stealthier, normally if I'm expecting to get the repick, I would switch to my FC gear and probably go in the corner and heal myself and maybe use some different consumables like 
um, like a elixir of fortitude and a something else. A scroll of stamina. But I'm expecting to be have to fight Allison Swift here. And so I'm in my full DPS gear, ready to kill him. So I start fighting him, do what I can to kill him. Um Why didn't I... Oh. <laughs> Title charmed me. Just calling out that he's in the flag room there. Oh, you know what? I should mention, so here I'm full health, right? And they have a decent number of people on, def on defense. And if you look on the left side on my small map, you can see we're not quite really ready to like fight them. A lot of people are still crossing mid or fighting mid. Um, and so there's two ways that you can basically take a fight on offense. The first one is to hero mode it in quotes, um, which is... You basically ignore everything except you and the FC, and you just try to tunnel the FC and kill the FC and then return the flag. Um, the other way is you try to take a team fight where you actually like kill people or CC them like slowly as a group, and then you eventually catch up to the FC. Um, the 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 tunnel strategy where you just tunnel the uh, FC, it's basically like a like like a limited time, like you, everybody on your team doing that is gonna die within like 30 seconds or something. So you have to like kill them within that 30 seconds. And so oftentimes in public games, that's just what's, what it's gonna be most of the time. It's like, it's just, you're gonna be diving the FC and trying to kill the FC. In more coordinated games, the defense is gonna be way better at killing you. And you're not gonna be able to like dive the FC like this. Like I, you can see what basically happens if you dive the FC, right? Like, cause we're not coordinated as a team right here, and like I'm basically going in on my own to try to just solo the FC. And this is what should happen if you have more skilled players on defense, is you just die. So you either need to go as a group and all tunnel FC like that, or go as a group and actually fight the team fight. So try not to do like in-betweens. You either just go for it when you have an opportunity to like try to kill the FC, like I had an opportunity here. I realized I'm running up on a mount. I'm almost in range. I can either back off and wait for my team or I could just go for this. And I see that he's, he's already used his first aid. He's half mana. And I've got some cooldowns up. I got my pot for fap. I've got grenades. I've got rocket boots in a little bit. I've got arena grandmaster trinket. So, you know, I have a reasonable chance of doing some good damage to him that will potentially set up for my team crossing mid to kill him. So that's why I go for that there rather than waiting for my team. But sometimes if you know like the defense is good and you're just not gonna get him, you should wait for your team. Um, let's see what we got going on. See, this is what happens when um because Allison Swift is damaged, he can't really risk the insta cap there. Because if he drops, I just kill him there. So he has to like stay in a more defensive location, which allows the repick to be done. Yeah, so I should have slammered here. You should be really careful in situations like this where like, especially right as you see a rogue or a hunter and they're like not expecting you. They're gonna blind or scatter shot like right then, and you can slammer it. Like, you can either slammer it like right as they're about to do it, so that they can't react to you having a slammer, or you can just do it ahead of time to prevent them from being able to blind you. And I did not do that here, so I get hit a really fucking large CC here, which is pretty bad. I don't think anything too bad happens off of it, but uh, all right. So stump jump. Um, you need. I Actually, I don't think you need speed to make this jump. It's just kind of hard to make without speed. So you can use speed if you have it to get across there. And this is the hard part. So you walk up. There are certain parts of the game where this pulls you up like a, like a, I don't know, some distance like this. And you, you snag your legs on something while running forwards. Then you line up roughly like there. 
this is your camera angle. So you get caught here and then you line up just a tiny bit to the right of the uh, like edge of the uh, stump polygon there. You see this? That's what I'm saying. So if you're back here, you line up with kind of like right here, just a tad bit to the right of this corner right here. Make that jump. If you're a gnome, you can get on a mount to get your hitbox good enough to make it. Otherwise, you're not going to make it as a gnome because gnomes are not great at jumps. Um, so I'm kind of struggling here, and also I'm frustrated that Allison so to safe spotting. My team is not helping me cross at all, so I'm just trying to figure out what to do here. So finally, eventually I decided I'm going to try to do the mid-map mid safe spot here. Okay, I jump over, I do these, blah, 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 I'm failing. And uh, MacArthur finds me, and he throws a flash bomb. He throws a flash bomb straight down, and if you throw a flash bomb right at your feet, there's basically no travel time, and you basically can't shift out of it, so, you know, theoretically flash bombs should be like 80% plus hit rate for melee classes. And so, of course, he hits a flash bomb here, and he gets unlucky and actually flash bombs me up the thing I was trying to climb up, which was nice. And MacArthur is decent at jumps, but some of these obscure jumps take him a little bit longer, so... I had a bit of time before we got up here. Now, he's probably up here already, but he's likely waiting for cooldowns because he already tried to kill me there and he did not get it because he flash bombed me away. So I know he's here, but he's waiting for cooldowns. I don't know where he is. Um, and that's the end of the video. I think there's more. Okay, so... So I was trying to communicate with my team, talking about some stuff and whatnot. Yeah, and then... Here, I was basically expecting him to be, like, right in front of me because... You know, he wants to be ready to open on me when he gets the chance. And... After standing out here and in the safe areas for a while and he realizes that I'm not like trying to shot him out. That's when I go for a shout out and walk forward a little bit. Oh, there's like invisible walls behind me too. So this is like very weak pseudo choke point. So I just run forward a little bit and do my losing shot. You can see he's standing like all the way on the edge there, like trying to not get hit by like a potential shout. I catch him. Then I mess up this fight pretty bad. I don't slam or the blind on it. I'm out of bear form. And then I make some other mistakes too. And then he doesn't know, I don't know if he doesn't know about the flame deflector thing, or he doesn't have it on cooldown or whatever, but he sappers himself here. This is when I had the opportunity to win the fight. If I reacted to this and sappered immediately, he would be dead. Especially if I moon fired here. Um, but I didn't, and I lost this fight. And I think we get capped on, yeah, we get capped on there. Um, this was, so this is a good lesson. Um, even though I'm pretty good at, at this point in time, I was pretty good at Orson Gulch and Battlegrounds in general. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm good at like duels. And so this is a 1v1 situation. And there's definitely a lot of things I could have done better in this. And so I highly recommend that if you want to be like really, really good at the game, that you actually practice duels. Like it doesn't matter who wins or loses the duel. It doesn't matter what consumes you use or what consumes you don't use. Whatever you do, you should practice fighting people. 1v1 and whatever other situation you can and at this point in time i didn't have much 1v1 practice and so i messed up my 1v1 and we got capped on because of it now had i had more 1v1 practice i might have won this could have been different so i highly recommend you practice your 1v1s in this game um priest is a broken ass class by the way i don't know why everybody plays it as a healer it's a fucking dps class in this expansion. Um, let's see what else we got to talk about. Mm, do I die anywhere in here? Oh yeah, I died to this. Okay, so let's look at the res situation. Okay, so I res. Apparently I'm like typing or something. Okay. So when you res, and you're trying really hard, you got a lot of buttons to press. You got... Probably a self buff, maybe two of them. 
and then you got your like your consumables. Maybe you want to swap out of a weapon. Maybe you need to do a gear swap. So there's a lot of things to press at the stop. So I highly recommend these three buttons or four buttons I have here are different macros. They use differing levels of consumables. So this lightning is the most the most expensive one where I think I'm about to press that, right? So you see that I clicked it. It hasn't gone off yet. And now it's gone off. And then I have, I have what? Arcane Elixir, Rumsy Rum, a Stamina Scroll, Thorns, and my Jade Pendant. So use all five of those at the exact same time. Um, compared to had you had, you pre had to press them all one at a time, this saves like one to two seconds every time you res having a macro that does them all at once. Highly recommend that. And then I have one more button that I can't do because of GCD. Thorns and Mark of the Wild are both GCD. So I gotta wait for Mark of the Wild, then I use Mark of the Wild. And as soon as you Mark of the Wild, you can mount up. I don't think I was sure where I was going yet, which is why I didn't mount up yet. But generally you use your buff macro and then either immediately mount or one more buff and then mount. And as you're buffing, you can run along. And obviously as you res, like right when you die, walk over to the farthest point towards where you're going already when you res. Then you res start walking, buff, buff with your macro, buff with your next one, mount up during GCD. Oh, some mounts, by the way, are on GCD. So when you buy your mount, test if it's able to be used during GCD. Uh, there are some mounts in the game. It's completely random, basically. Some mounts work, some mounts don't. I don't know why. Make sure you have a mount that works during GCD. Otherwise, if you have to buff yourself with the GCD, you're going to be waiting a second and a half of lost time on your mount every single time you res, which is a big deal. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So walking into, walking into like buildings like this, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think, well, I'll just say the important thing to know is that you don't want to like, you don't want to jump and you don't want to strafe sideways or turn abruptly. So you basically just want to keep holding forward and that'll extend it basically as long as it can. There are certain like points at which it'll usually dismount you at and you can learn those points and jump like right before it's going to dismount you. Um, and then you can also do the opposite where if you're getting outside and you need to use like travel form, you can either land from a jump or strafe sideways to re like cancel that like delay there and it'll let you switch to travel form immediately. Similarly, when you're going into a building, you can land a jump or strafe right before you go in to reset that timer. So like here, I'm, I am strafed right to the side there to reset the clock. And then now I'm in the indoors section where it's about to, to swap me out. Now, the amount of time sort of like RNG. I don't, I don't really know the easiest way to explain it, but um, you basically can cancel the timer by landing a jump or by side strafing. So before you go in, sometimes it's worth it to side strafe. And then if you need to switch to travel form, you can side strafe or land a jump. So when I'm fighting, typically um, Insect Swarm and Moonfire, your best spells followed by regrowth and then rejuvenation. So a good start to the fight would be Insect Swarm, Moonfire, regrowth, rejuvenation. Um, but you can cast Fell Iron Bomb during GCD, or really any grenade, whether it's Sapper or Dynamite or something. And so I think here I'm gonna Insect Swarm. So I Wrath Insect Swarm and I have a GCD. And so during the GCD, I'm casting Fell Iron Bomb which gives me a little bit of CC on him, interrupts their cast, does really good damage. And I can go back to casting regularly. So use your grenades and stuff during GCD, just like you should weapon swap during GCD and mount up during GCD. Um, Oh, you should be a gnomish engineer, by the way, so you get this gnomish world enlarger so that you could be small when you want to be small sometimes. Deviate fish can also make you small, but it lowers your strength and constitution or something by like eight. So the deviate fish shrink is not very good. Um, 
Alright, let's pull up a different one. Alright, so we got a lot of people on defense here. This is always what happens in pub games. You should not be playing 7 defense. 7 defense is generally just bad. Um, AFKing on defense, also very bad. People don't realize how bad just standing still doing nothing is in this game. Um, and that's also part of why I'm holding down here instead of on top of roof, is because it's a more active location. And generally being active is better than being defensive. So, for example, a lot of people set up for their push to roof, like right here in tunnel by like boots and stuff and so people like will mindlessly walk in the tunnel thinking that there's not going to be people fighting them and here we're playing nice and active killing people on defense as you should and so before they can even get in position to like set up to go up i think that's actually a bot we're killing right now but regardless the concept applies um actually no it's not a bot it's a fucking player isn't it i don't know regardless um like, they're expecting Tunnel to just be free because we're sitting on roof. Then we push into them and surprise kill them. And when you kill a player on defense, that is a huge deal because they have to both res, especially 30 seconds if you kill them at the correct time. And then they have to run across mid and they have to buff. It's like almost two minutes of CC. Like, imagine a CC that stuns them for two minutes. Like, that's insane. That would be ridiculous if you could just hammer justice someone and then they're stunned for two minutes, okay? That's what killing people is on defense, so... A lot of people, for some reason, think that you want to CC the offense when you're on defense. People are like, oh, Mage is really good for defense because you can, like, Blizzard them, you can Frost Nova them, you can Cone of Cold them and Polymorph them, and how are they going to get up your ramp? Well, they're going to keep holding W and eventually get up your ramp. Like, you got to kill them and send them back. Stun them for two minutes. Um, so, <clears throat> so the way you play defense is aggressively. You kill people on defense, and that's what I'm doing here. Because I actually had some teammates that were cooperating with me and playing defense properly. Their team in this game, I believe, is way stronger than us. But they don't are not committing enough to offense, and we're doing a really good job of preventing them from setting anything up by playing aggressively. <clears throat> but eventually, I got bored and was like, "Hey, let's just let's just have some fun and throw the game." This is really hard to do, by the way. If you ever think 10 offense is like a real strategy, it's just not. Like, you're at an enormous disadvantage when you do this. Like, it's a joke if you're able to do this. Like, the other team... <laughs> and Or, sorry, your team. If you could do this, your team should have, like, won the game so long ago. Oh, I think... Yeah, I think... Uh, fucking... What's his name? Slippery Pete. Safe spotting in this game, which is the issue. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to show them how to do this jump, but it's like, it's so finicky that it's like, can't even really explain it to somebody on the fly. They just have to practice it. And then this fucking guy's blizzarding and shit, so I have to shift out of his roots and whatnot. His frozen ring and all that bullshit. And of course, he just gets away because my team is like not ready. And I can't drop, really. At least not easily. <laughs> oh yeah, you can get some line of sight, by the way, um, jumping over this front log. But they also get line of sight on you, so if they realize they can cast on you. This was a really funny game, actually. Everybody was trying to get over here, and they just couldn't. Oh, like Only Alice and Swift could do it, but he could, you can't 1v1 me. So every time he comes over here, I just fight him, and he drops. <laughs> I think eventually Sijsu got like close enough where he could cast on me. I... Yeah, as soon as they like, as soon as they got Sijsu in range, I was just done. Uh, Hunter is the best class in game, in case you didn't know. Just figured I'd put that out there. Um, so you should have a guild bank for yourself. If you want to be in a guild with other players, then you need, um. Another account, which you probably should have anyways for buff alts, at least one buff alt, um, that are all holding your consumes, so you can easily restock consumes after the game without having to log out or go to the mailbox or something. Um, you can use a mailbox, but mailboxes have very limited space, 
And so anything you can do to expand the amount of space you have to hold your consumables is really good. Um, I, mean, I think I've covered like most of the consumables already. Let me see. Mm. Those Arcanite bo bars are for Arcanite bombs, by the way. Nothing too important I want to cover there. These icons I have in the bottom right, these are buff reminders to let me know. that They're a little more detailed than just what the icon might make you think they are. Like the scroll, the scrolls check for like a bunch of different kinds of scrolls and like the their guardian elixir checks for a handful of different guardian elixirs. One of these scrolls is your own scroll and the other scroll is a target scroll because you can use scrolls on other players. So this checks if the person has a scroll. And most people do not use scrolls, so you can give everyone on your team an extra like seven agility or something if you just scroll everyone on your team. And with inscription, you can craft the scrolls really easily. So they're not expensive like they are in other expansions. Um, this is my pet down here. It's just fun to have in the start of the game. I would recommend dismissing it in my opinion because it makes it a little too obvious where you are. And you're running through like mid, especially when you're small. Um, so I have a dismiss pets thing built and also break the uh, Dartle's rod because you can't mount when you're in furbog form, I think, in Wrath. Um, built into my mount macro. Um, I have a few abilities like Starfire that doubles as Shred, I think that's called, or whatever the backstab is, or whatever. Um, and Moonfire is also my rip. So I have a couple abilities that are like doubled up on my keybinds that that are like form specific and I'm only gonna be like using them in one form or the other. And I don't need like like insect swarm, if I press that in cat form, it'll break out of cat form. But like if I press rip in cat form, it's not gonna moon fire in cat form. And so I, I'm gonna want rip every time. Fairy fire, this macro casts both fairy fires. Um, poison decurs are just mouse overs. Uh, what, what else do I got from macros? Flag drop macro, that's very important. Make sure you drop both flags now, alliance and horde flag, because of the retail fucking alliance versus alliance feature, horde versus horde feature, where you can be on the other team. Um, so my rebirth macro whispers the person that I'm resing and tells them that I'm going to be resing them in three seconds. Um... All my abilities, I'm cat form right now, so you can't really see. Okay, so all my abilities are macro. They all do cancel goblin mortar. They all do start attack. They all do cast and then start attack. So it tries to target somebody. It also tries to swing at them. You would be surprised how often you can get a swing with your weapon off before you begin casting if you just put start attack before all your spells. Um, it's basically just free damage because attacks are instant and then just. You just attack somebody and then immediately start casting a spell. Um, the thing you have to watch out for is if that's built into your abilities, the main time it's an issue is when you're melee range and somebody CC you. And this is most often after Rocket Helm. So if you Rocket Helm somebody and you want to immediately start casting like Wrath, um, it's going to swing at them and break the Rocket Helm. So be aware of that and have some other plan in mind so you don't break the Rocket Helm. Whether it's just backing up a little bit so you're not in melee range or whatever it is. But uh, I like to have that in all my macros because it targets somebody if you don't have somebody targeted. And it also swings at them if you have a swing ready. Um, so these two macros up here. This is oh shit one and oh shit two. This pops like everything that keeps me alive in this game. Um, like it pops... Lifeblood, Frenzied Regeneration, Gemstone Leather Belt, Healthstone, which, oh, by the way, one of your buff offs should be a Warlock to trade you a Healthstone for the game. Uh, they can also put two buffs on you. Uh, healing, healing Potion or Wild Vine Potion, uh, Battle Standard it uses. It uses Gemstone Leather Belt, Harm Prevention Belt, um, the, the Recombobulator, the Arena Grandmaster, um... It just uses everything, and you can't even fit them all in one line, so I have two different ones. So you press one, and then you press the other, and that'll just pop, like, everything that you can pop 
basically at the same time. Uh, it gets almost everything. There's like one or two things that it doesn't catch, and then Deviate Fish obviously is a short cooldown, so you can keep pressing Deviate Fish. Mm. Mind Control Helmet, that's a really good item. Make sure you have that as well as your Rocket Helmet. Um... Oh yeah, I have two different flash bomb binds. The important one is flash bomb at player, so it just throws it at your feet so that they can't shift out of it, like if you throw it really far, if you just were using it normally. Um, I have some gear swaps here, so I can easily swap to these specific pieces. Um, I don't have in my, in all my gear, so I have a bunch of different gear sets, and I don't have like helmet, boots, and then neck, belt, uh, and weapon in my gear sets. So all of those are switched manually. So I have keybinds for like five, six, or seven different gear sets. And then on top of that, after I switch, I have to switch a few things manually. Usually it's just my boots and my helmet. Um, sometimes it's the belt, but the belt is more like the trinkets where you kind of just like rotate them when they're on cooldown. Um, and as for my gear sets, I have, so thorns for pre-buffing. I have my standard high damage gear set I have a tanky with green wealth armor, a tanky with no green wealth armor, or FC with no green wealth armor. And then I have, I shouldn't have said tanky, I meant FC. FC with green wealth armor, FC with no green wealth armor. Um, which, by the way, sometimes you want to not use green wealth armor, even, even if you're playing with green wealth armor allowed. Sometimes the stamina chest is better. It gives you a fuckload of HP, actually. Um... Then I have actual tanky DPS, which is like a hybrid between some stamina, some damage. And then I also have uh, same version, but green wealth armor. So it's partial damage, a little bit of tankiness, and green wealth armor. And then the last one is a little bit more tankiness. And I, I think no green wealth armor. And then there might be one more with green wealth armor. I don't know. I, I'm unsubbed right now, so I don't have access to check all of them. I haven't played like in a month or something or two. Um, sometimes there's seasonal buffs you can get, by the way. Make sure you get whatever seasonal buffs you can. And there's also a lucky rocket cluster you can pre-buff with if you want. Those are from Lunar Festival. You run around, you get one lucky rocket cluster for every fucking guy you talk to or something. You can shoot them up. Gives you like 10 stamina, 30 stamina, something. Stacks with like everything, I think. I don't know. It's really good. Mm. all right this is parachute cloak here so parachute cloak is a very very good item in wrath of lich king it has 30 second cooldown for slow fall now it only gives agility which you would think is not very good obviously on a class that uses agility it's insane but even on classes that don't use agility slow fall is a really good effect like particularly for melee classes like you can use slow fall to well, let, let's use some balanced druid examples. Okay, so like you can, with the flag, you can go up somewhere high, like a top of roof or a fence or something, mount up, which drops the flag, jump off with mount speed, and then parachute cloak to maintain that mount speed for longer and not take fall damage as well. Similarly, if you're on offense, well, not similarly, but also with the parachute cloak, cloak if you're on offense and you're dropping from high roof to flag room, that's going to hurt you a lot. It's going to do like hundreds of damage. And if you have slow fall, you can just slow fall right right before you get to the bottom, prevent all that damage. And if you prevent it, that's basically like having a cloak with like 30, 35 stamina, maybe even more if you're higher HP class. Just preventing that damage is like a 50 stamina cloak. Like that could be insane, especially if you're like an FC class with a ton of health. It could be a big deal to prevent that um, fall damage. And you get to use this like all the time. You can also use it to, like, get farther right before you get CC'd. Like, say a Frostbolt is about to hit you, a level 1 Frostbolt. You can time it to jump right before the Frostbolt hits you, and then Parachute Cloak to maintain that jump for even longer than the jump would originally do it. Um, can I explain mount jump? Like, go up somewhere high, mount, jump forward, grab the flag, Parachute Cloak. Um...
Yeah, I mean, that's mainly what I want to talk about with that. Oh, you can also use it for rollouts. If you don't need your cloak right before the game, you can use cl Parachute Cloak to roll out with boots from Tunnel faster to get to, like, Zircut. Um, and then you're also going to want to cancel our macro to cancel the slow fall. Uh, Dark Rune. If you didn't know, you can use Dark Runes at this level. And as a mana user, these are very important because mana spells are very inefficient and it's very hard to keep your mana up in this expansion because there's no drink walking and spells just cost so much anyways. So having Dark Runes is a good way to maintain your mana. Highly recommend you get them. They're also good for killing yourself to prevent like a if somebody's if you realize somebody's trying to kill you to get you give you a full death timer you can dark rune to kill yourself faster um it's mainly used for mana and on balance druid it's especially good because you can just heal yourself afterwards from the damage you take also most of the time when you're using this you don't even care about the damage you can also band-aid yourself oh make sure you have the broken band-aids the 450 band-aids that just fully heal you they're really good um Obviously, Skull of Impending Doom is good. It's much less good than it was because you have Slammers now. But it's still good for run speed. You can use, like, one tick of it and get a decent amount of run speed. You can use it to, like, hit, like, a jump that you need speed for. Like, you can go from mid-alliance roof, or mid-alliance top of tunnel to top of alliance top of a tunnel. Like, the, the Druid jump that everybody does with Travel Form, you could do that with Skull of Impending Doom. Just as one example of what you can use that for. Um, it's not really used for breaking CC anymore, in my opinion, unless for some reason you're playing with banned slimer rules. Um, <coughs> obviously, you need to cancel for Skull, because Skull hurts really bad. <coughs> I have a cancel for Zerk, because a lot of times I'll start the game, grab Zerk, because nobody on my team is grabbing Zerk, and I'll fight the opponent's team, because generally you want to fight the opponent's team at the start of the game to, to get control of mid. Um, and if you're going to be the target and you have Zerk, like if everybody's going to be focusing you and you're going to be taking all the damage and not dealing much damage yourself, obviously you want to cancel that so you don't take as much damage. Um, so this thing, I have this called Mac. So this macro is a Trinket Fap Slammer macro. So it uses trin Trinket Fap and Slammer. I think you have to press it two times to make it work. Um, and it also cancels the slammer um, self-stun thing. Um, and what that does is it allows you to break out of like a cheap shot or a kidney shot, for example, and not immediately get um, gouged or blinded um, or kidney shotted right afterwards. So like if they get cheap shotted, you could pop that and immediately be free of all their CC. Very good. I have it named Mac because MacArthur is probably the best rogue and one of the only rogues that is so good at the game that i actually have to have this macro to, i actually have to use this macro against the rogue to beat them um so i recommend you have one of those to just i need to be mo moving button <laughs> which trinkets faps and slams which basically covers almost all forms of cc not everything but it gets most things um <laughs> so shadow meld so shadow meld you can use to drop combat which is good if you need to like go stealth if you need to eat food and drink faster before combat's going to drop use that to drop combat it, you can use it to interrupt spells that are being hard casted on you you can use it to go into stealth, like so, one really good use is you run into Resto Hut, but you have somebody chasing you, and you're in combat, so you can't go stealth. So you Shadow Meld to drop combat, and then you go Cat Stealth, and then you can move out of the way, and you can dodge the people chasing you, and you can, you can get the full health from Resto like that. Um, down here, I have a consumable bar. Uh, ideally, it wouldn't just be a bar. It would be like an actual weak or that tracks how many I want, want to have as, of each thing and lets me know which ones I'm getting low on and whatnot, but I, I never got that set up. Um, your bank slots, you want... Um, oh, I, I meant 22 slot bags earlier when I was talking about bag size, by the way. 
bank you you want all your slots and you want as big as you can get pretty much because you're gonna have some alternate gear that you might want sometimes in here whether it's for some other like fc you know talents or something or just your all your food from uh, your pvp food by the way you should make a summon alt and park it out there and if you have three accounts you can do it yourself if you have two you can do it with a friend uh, on your on your twink account you have another alt that you log out to bring out the summoning stone then you log into your twink and you click with two people and if you only have two accounts then you have a friend that has another alt out there then you can summon yourself out there anyway you don't have to run out there every single time you need more food um this festive mug is from new year's it gives you slow fall Let's see. Let's see what other videos I got. Okay, let's see what else we got um oh so okay a few things so you can get to here by using a mount uh par mount jump with a parachute cloak and you can bring the flag with you if you want it's not a very good spot because i believe they can just cast on you there it's kind of like a cheeky hiding spot for avoiding noobs people should see you there if you have nameplates on though it's not very good um but this area to the left is called china i believe uh, Get the camera. So, so this area over here is called China. Um, you can get up there from by ramp. There's a few difficult jumps you can do to get there. It's a good spot to use uh, like Hunter Disengage to go across a map or like Super Rocket Boots if you're level 79, gets you all the way across a map. It's also a good way to sneak past like this choke in tunnel. It's another way to come in through um, to, into the Alliance base from. Uh, it's pretty hard to do, but it's an option. Uh, oh yeah, I think I'll do this mount jump here. This is an example of mount jump, I think. Oh yeah, this is a game that I, <laughs> I took a shit during this game when I had the flag and we like, I don't know if we won or whatever, but I think we won this game somehow. Yeah, like AFK'd. Took a shit. <laughs> it actually worked. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what's going on in this game. Okay, so this jump, I guess he just failed it there because he got slowed or something. But you got this jump that goes to the right. A lot of people do that jump, but there's also another one on the left here that goes straight up to tunnel that he's doing right now. This jump is super precise and depends on your... Um, race as well how to do it you can go up in i think technically like two jumps but it's basically three jumps um it's a faster route to top of tunnel and it's very very important to know i recommend everybody practice that jump and learn it even though it's really hard yeah this is the game that i took a shit and then i walked over and immediately with the flag i walked over and immediately killed ogre killing cats <laughs> That was a funny game. I think we win this. Three minutes remaining. Um, so you see, I have not my Grand Staff of Jordan equipped. This is my Int Staff. I think I sort of explained this earlier, but it gives you some more mana at the start of the fight. And then as soon as you use all that mana, you can cast an instant cast spell, and then during GC, swap to your higher spells power weapon. Um... Let's see, what else have I not covered? Nature's Grasp is really good as balance because your roots do so much damage. Ah. <sighs> 
Alright, what is this? Um, so as a balanced druid, you're not an FC, but you're an okay FC if you have to do it. Um, as a balanced druid, FCing, preferably you don't run. You know how as a feral FC, you pretty much always run when you when somebody starts pushing you on roof. Your ideal situation as a balanced druid is just f to fight them. Like, balanced druids are fighters, not runners. Like, they can actually fight. And if you could just kill the people that are pushing you, that's way better than running around. Because you can only run around for so long, and then you're going to get caught. Especially as balance. Um... Yeah, so here I do my Insect Swarm, Moonfire, and then I start healing myself with the Regrowth Rejuve. That's basically the order of how good your abilities are. Insect Swarm scales off of spell power, like 2.0 if you're talented and glyphed into it. The talent is the duration, like one extra tick on it, and then the glyph is just Insect Swarm. Um, I think I actually die here. I can't believe I remember this. Yeah, I was like... Yeah, this was like a mistake because I didn't realize that I could just get 100 zeroed during the first, like, two stuns. Because there's not very many, like, actual good rogue players. So I learned here that you... If, if there's even a chance that you could get opened on, you need to be in bear form. I thought I was going to be fine, so... Oh yeah, when you're when you're doing your instant cast spells, you can like strafe in and out of line of sight like this. It'll both you can use it both to interrupt casts or to make it harder for somebody to target you, begin casting, or even do their own instant casts. Like I think like here I could when I do this first one, I, I could get intercepted there, but he didn't get it because he wasn't ready to. And so because I was behind the long it, the wall, it stopped him from intercepting me as quickly. You can also pre-cast Nature's Grasp, by the way, because it does so much damage. A lot of times it's worth casting. It lasts 45 seconds. It's just some free damage that you can prepare ahead of time. It's kind of similar to your, uh, um, like, Regrowth and Rejuve ahead of time. Yeah, I guess I should explain that, like, because your Regrowth and Rejuve are so strong, same thing with your Healing Touch, actually. You're kind of a decent healer, especially, like, just for two seconds of healing on somebody else that's FCing on your team. Getting a regrowth and a rejuve off of, uh, on an FC on your team is over 2,000 healing, which is a ridiculous amount of healing for two seconds of being in contact with somebody. Um, if you're playing Balanced Druid in a proper team properly, you're going to be doing as much damage as you are doing healing. Like, the more I got better at this class, the more I started healing, because the heals are actually just kind of really strong. I think... I stopped using um, the Glyph of Wrath the better I got when I got better at the class. Because Wrath, yes, it does a lot of damage, but a lot of times it's just better things for you to be doing rather than Wrath. So here I'm precasting because I know I'm going to fight 0 2. I'm precasting my Regrowth and my Rejuve. Then I Fap and go in Bear Form. And then I... So I got... Oh yeah, so I got um, distracted. Okay, yeah, yeah, so let me explain this. So I'm still friend slamming here because I was expecting you to, like, some kind of CC that slammer would stop. And as I'm moving, I'm shaking my camera left and right, which both prevents the effect from slammer, but the part I want to explain is that it stops distracts. So if you're... If you're shaking your, your mouse, like, he distracts me right here, right? Like, I barely even moved from that distract. And that's because I was shaking my mouse constantly to autocorrect the drunk effect, and it also autocorrects distracts. So anytime you're moving with the flag in an important location where there's any kind of chance you can get distracted, you should be shaking your mouse so that distract doesn't destroy you. Because you can go 
really far with distract if you're just like auto running and not ready for it. Whereas if you're shaking your mouse constantly, the distract barely sends you anywhere. Um, and on defense, you can, you can kind of do the cycle as balanced druid. If you're FC, you can do the cycle of come out of bear form, insta cast re regrowth, and then cast rejuve and go back into bear form and then drink. That way you always have a hot on you and there's only like small gaps of time where a rogue could open on you, um, where you don't have bear form or hots going. What is even going on here? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I saw Pickles is kind of getting caught out here, and I'm not worried. So the reason I drop here is because I'm not worried about myself dying. I have all, like, my cooldowns and everything up. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Um, and I don't want Pickles to survive this, and I don't want Pickles to kill anybody on my team. So I come here to try to help clean up the fight and to make sure that he's committed and that he's going to die with a 26-second rest timer. All right, so he was probably going to die anyways, but I just wanted to make sure that, that I could like hit him with a fairy fire or something to prevent him from not getting staggered there. Because now he's really staggered from his team. Like, I see 02s here, sort of ready to try to do something, and Pickles is nowhere to be found, right? You see 02s here, and Pickles is not because we staggered Pickles earlier. And you see this whole fight, Pickles is not here. Um, whereas if Pickles had survived there... I would just be dead here against Pickles in zero two. Okay, so let's see what go what happens in this fight. So I use my chicken here, surely. Your chicken lasts two minutes, and you can swap off the chicken after you use it. Oh, so I'm targeting around to see where the rogues are. I think zero two just went stealth, so I'm about to chicken, surely. After I use rejuve, re rejuve. Oh yeah, cat form shows you where players are. Track humanoid is a really good ability. Surely a chicken now. Because I couldn't get the fairy fire. There's chicken. Okay. Chicken is really good at getting people out of stealth. It also does a lot of damage, actually. And so he's running, I think, for the chicken right now. We have a fight here. He's fapped. I'm also fapped. I'm, I used one of my cooldowns. Friends of Regeneration. Insect Swarm fell off, so I gotta re... re, um... dot him there, but he was gonna rocket helm me right as I re-dotted. So ideally I would have sap or, or slammered and then dot him there. And then the only thing he could do is vanish. Ended up working out. I think he got a 30 second res timer as well, which I bet he was pretty upset by. Um... Yeah, this, I think, was a game where their offense was, like, just nobody for some reason. And this is why Th Thorns is such an important ability. It's because, like, especially if you're the one FCing, like, there's only so much you could do here. Like, you can only put, like, a couple dots up, heal yourself, throw a grenade, and then you're kind of just sitting in bear form and hoping for the best. And... Against rogues that attack so often, sitting in bear form, and if you have a big thorns, like, it could be doing a lot of damage. Like, you see my thorns is hitting them for, like, 30-something now. The yellow numbers are not, like, super easy to see. But, like, look, you see those two 30s there, and there'll be a couple more 30s there. Kind of hard to see because they're on my UI. More 30s. Resisted one there, another 30. A couple more 30s. Compared to regular thorns, it's for, like, 8 or something. Makes a big difference when you're in bear form, just tanking shit is to have a good thorns. Oh, um, so I bandited there. Um, I didn't know I had rupture on me. Um, I have a what is it? A potion of poison cleansing. There's some pot that cleanses up to four poisons on you or something at some time. There's a potion that cures poison, and it's super good. It doesn't share a cooldown with, like, anything besides itself. It doesn't trigger, like, GCD or something. And so you can put it in your first aid macro. 
and one other macro as well. I forget the other macro, but let's just say your first aid macro. So before you have slash use heavy, whatever frost weave bandage, you have slash use poison cleansing potion. I forget what it's called. And it won't use anything if you don't have a poison. And then if you have a poison, like say serpent sting on you, it'll get rid of that and allow you to bandaid. Very, very good. Um, you can also, I believe, while running, use the same Band-Aid keybind to just cleanse a Weavern Sting if you need to save mana. You have a Weavern Sting on you. And so a lot of Balanced Truth is just waiting for your dots and your hots to damage and heal people. So a, a lot of matchups, when you have the opportunity to, is just running. So like you, it's like here I'm fighting Pickles right now. Okay, so I, I, get, I need to get my Fairy Fire up so that he can't do all this fancy stuff, vanish and whatnot. Get some dots up on him, maybe get a hot up on myself. So I did Insect Swarm re Rejuve, Moonfire. Then I have enough space, I think, to get a regrowth, so I go for a regrowth. Then I saw he got CC'd for a second, so I got a Wrath off. And then I, here I'll go Bear Form, probably. Just trying to get two Wraths just to get him done with. You just wait for your dots and stuff to do all the work. Um, let's talk about holding in graveyard. Um, so holding your graveyard is really, really good. Because <laughs> earlier I was talking about how crossing the map takes like a minute and my defense crossing the map takes like 15 seconds. Well, if you're in graveyard, crossing the map takes zero seconds because you spawn right where you need to be to defend your flag. So if you have a good defense that's actually like fighting people and dying, but you're not dying, Sitting graveyard is like one of the best places to sit in the game because roof is a good place to set up because it's a choke. There's only like one direction that you can come from really, or two on alliance. Um, and you can handle things using like frost trap, which is insanely broken and flare to prevent stealthies. Um, this location has none of that. It's really easy to push the spot. You can come from mounted from ramp on tunnel side, mounted from ramp on base side. You can come from base, you can come from uh, Alliance Graveyard Jump, you can come from far side Alliance Graveyard Jump, you can charge up, you can rocket helm up. There's so many ways you can get here, but it still has a major advantage of all your defenders res in 15 seconds average. Like, they res so fast that, especially if the other team has a lot of my mana users on offense, like, they might not be able to do anything because the defend defenders are just rezzing and fighting too much and they're just losing too many resources, even though the FC's just sitting here in the open. Um, and similarly, if you have nobody on defense and you want somebody on defense helping you, like, okay, so here. So I can run, like, okay, let, let's say here. Yeah, here. So there's two people rezzing. In 16 seconds list. I can go and try to go to roof, but I'm going to be on my own, and there's a chance that there's like a rogue in connector ready to kill me. Whereas if I just wait here, the rogue has to both walk over here to be to start fighting me, and then by the time he gets here and starts fighting me, these two resers are going to res, and they're going to be right on me, which not only saves them the walk time, but also convinces the noobs to actually fight and defend me when, when I want them to. Um, whereas had I left... He, the, the people rezzing might be so bad that they don't realize that I'm dying in connector and that they could just walk over there and they might just drop off graveyard and not even help you and then you lose the game. So sometimes it's good to wait in graveyard. Especially because like right here, I have like no cooldowns. I have, um, I used my gemstone leather belt. I used my battle standard. I used my rocket boots. I used my rocket helm. Um, and I'm half mana. Like I don't have very much if somebody were to try to fight me in connector and I'd be alone. So here I'm just like, all right, I'll just sit here, get my mana back, and then have these re these resers, which turned out to be four resers, defend me. So that worked pretty well. And then once I was more comfortable, like I had a few people on me and I was like more healthy and cooldowns and buffs and everything ready, that's when I go back. Because say this happened in Connector earlier, if I had I left, there would be like nobody there to have defended me from this. Is there a good fear? I 
Yeah, I think Zero Two didn't notice that they dropped the flag. So you keep going for these uh, like Moonfire, Fell Iron Bombs. It's a really good combo to use. Fell Iron Bombs are ridiculously cheap because the Engineering Guide tells everybody to make them while leveling, so they're like 40 silver each in the auction house usually. Or less. And they do a shitload of damage and stun for a long time. And they have a big AoE. Can't move while using them, but they're, they're generally worth it. Let's see, what is going on in this fight? Okay, because this is starting to get dicey here with the second rogue here now. Pickles and Zero Two on me here. Need to fap here, use AGM. Maybe press my oh shit button. Get Frenzy Regeneration off. Probably use a Hellstone. I sl you see I slammered there. I was actually ready for this time. So I slammered and then the blind here breaks. Like normally if I didn't slammer here, I think I just die here. If nobody breaks this blind, they both get a re-stealth here and they just ambush ambush me and I die. Or at least one of them gets a re-stealth and I die. Also broke gouge there, I think. See, I'm gouged here and he's waiting and then slammer ticks and I get out. I capped off the slammer. It's just an example of how to use slammer. <laughs> just pickle raging about slammer. <laughs> Yeah, if you didn't know, slammers should be allowed because hunters and rogues are broken as fuck. <laughs> That's basically the, the gist of it. Also, green wall is really good. It also gives rogues counterplay to green wall armor, of course. Slammers are a really good item, Oshas in vanilla. Everybody should use them. They're also hard to use, they're quite skill based. I don't think I don't think people that never use them realize just how hard they are to use properly. How much else there is I want to cover? I feel like I've covered most things. You can see how good the uh, Frenzy Regeneration Glyph is every time I use it, it's insane. Yeah, so I pressed the us call out down here because I was having trouble crossing mid and none of my team is coming to help me. So this says help RFC, which tries to tell all these people that, hey, I fucking need help. Because they're all just like randomly fighting and they should be helping me cross right now. Especially because the, the other team hasn't even picked the flag. Like this is a cap if you just don't get me across. This is another, another common combo as well as you grab the... Uh, Resto and you line of sight and you start healing yourself with regrowth rejuve and maybe a healing touch or a band-aid A lot of times when you do this you only get like one or two ticks of resto like I'm completely um here and like people are chasing me So I'm only gonna get a couple ticks of this But it gives me enough that the the regrowth and rejuve lets me stall for a while So let's see how long oh, I guess I have the flag here. So I mean Keeps me alive here, but say I didn't have the flag. It just helps me stall longer, it wastes the opponent's time. And like you you can based off the res timer, choose a time to stop healing yourself and cancel all your hots and everything to die and instantly res. And so you wasted their time, especially if they're a mana user, they they they'd be oom um like after that. And you would instant res for just as an example. Um, so here, as a druid, when you do jumps, you should shift every time you do a jump, so that if you're slowed, it unslows you, and you get your jump as you would normally expect it. You also need to watch for warriors when you're like crossing like this. A lot of people don't know how to do this jump, and they'll be chasing you on a warrior, and then here they'll like intercept you, and that's a huge, huge problem. Because intercept stuns a long time, and then the warrior is going to beat the shit out of you. Um, whereas, there's no warrior in this case, but if you 
kind of walk along the ledge here and then wait like a little bit, um, the warrior will probably realize, oh, hey, I can intercept to get up to him. And then he'll intercept and then he'll fall back down because there's nowhere for him to stand after he intercepts. Now, theoretically, a better warrior will never do that and they'll just wait till you can, till they can intercept up properly. But just a piece of advice is you can, bad warriors, you can make intercept and fall if you stand on the ledge and wait for them to intercept. Um, so this is an example of, here's a good spot to either land a jump or strafe for a second before you go in. I mean, I'm cat form here, but say, say you were travel form. This is a good spot. You would like jump and land or strafe for a second and then go in and hold forward. And then right before you get into the flag room, you jump one more time. And that jump, when you land, it will cancel your travel form. But if you time this next jump, you get one more jump, chain jump, bunny, it's a bunny hop basically, where it shifts you out of travel form right as you're jumping and then you get one more travel form speed jump even though you're back in human form already. That'll give you a consistent like travel form into flag room. Um, and after you cap a flag, generally like, not only after you capture a flag, but oftentimes in the game, and just as an example of after you capture a flag, you want to push out of your base and clear out your base as you're leaving. Um, so if you need mana to fight people, then you got to drink before you do that, obviously. Um, and then say, like, I think here nobody went out tunnel after this cap, and so there theoretically could be a flag carrier in tunnel getting ready to come pick. And the earlier you fight them and the earlier you clear them out of your base, the better. So, theoretically, I think... I guess the game was over or something. Oh, yeah, it was. But say the game was continuing. I would walk out tunnel here and look for anybody in tunnel or banana or roof and fight them if I can. And then walk out of tunnel. If I see somebody coming up ramp, fight them. You know, that would be the standard play. Now, in actual games... Uh, you got plenty of noobs that are AFK on defense that could be killing those people for you. But um, And also, sometimes you'd need to be picking up the opponent flag because you have nobody on your fucking team that's doing it. Even though, like, anybody on your team can pick up the flag. It doesn't matter who it is. Anybody can hold the flag as well. It doesn't matter who it is. But sometimes you have to do it in, like, pub games and whatnot. All right, I'm going to pull up one more and... I don't think I'm going to watch it. I'm just going to look at a few things and see if I think of anything I want to talk about. I see. Right, these are some duels, I guess. Oh, this is when I transferred. I transferred. God, this is so sad. I fucking transferred. I didn't even play that much. I played a couple weeks, and then I stopped playing for a month, and they opened up free transfers. I fucking spent so much money. I fucking hate Blizzard. Anyways, this is just an example of... Um, what we're doing here is we're just, like, dueling back to back to back to back to back to back, and using basically whatever we want to. Um, because in Battlegrounds, you're going to be using... Basically, whatever. And so, sometimes you're going to have some things up. Sometimes you're going to have some things not up. So, you don't want to wait, like, five minutes in between every duel. Make sure you have all your cooldowns. Because in an actual game, you're not going to have that. Every situation is going to be a little bit different. And so, the more you can be comfortable in all kinds of different situations, like, the better. Mm. So, I have a swing timer. So, this is an example of a swing timer in the middle of my screen is ready. All right. So, I'm running up. I think I Moonfire here, right? And, like, I was already auto-attacking him, so it would have swung anyways. But say I didn't have him targeted, and I just walk around the corner, and I press Moonfire. If you didn't have the start attack macro, you wouldn't get this um, swing off. And you see it right there. That is actually the swing. It's really, really delayed. But you can see my swing timer. It, it's already swung. Like, the swing timer is resetting, right? Right here. So I'm pointing at my fucking screen like a fucking moron. Uh, so I already swung at him. So, like, I come around this corner. Swing, which is instant, and then I cast Moonfire, like, basically right away, or Insect Storm, I guess. And it looks like it didn't do anything. 
right? Like, I haven't seen the yellow number yet. But that's just because the animation is delayed. Like, I'm literally stunned here. And ah, I swung at him. In the middle of a gouge, I swung at him with your auto attack. That's because I actually used it way back here. But when you're doing other stuff, the auto attack doesn't come out. So it's, like, delayed. And it doesn't show up until this point. But I did actually swing at him because of the uh, um, start attack before the macros. And that's why I use a staff instead of the uh, one-hander and offhand. It's because even though it's a little bit less stats than the one-hander, uh, you get to melee, which is good for this reason where you just get some free melee sometimes. And also, sometimes you're really, really low on mana and all you can do is chase somebody and travel for them and swing at them while your dots tick. So it's good to have a staff that does more damage than your one-hander. Oh, so he's... He's, um... Death raying me here, and so I'm gonna shadow meld to cancel the death ray. That's his fucking stream I'm listening to as well. But you see, his, his death ray got canceled because I shadow melded. That's just a good example of how to use. Um, how do you shadow meld? Um, I, let me see if I can pull up my trinkets. These are the trinkets that I carry. Um. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Death Ray is really good in combination with Rocket Helm because you can Rocket Helm up to somebody and then Death Ray them. Um, Death Ray, besides that, it's kind of hard to use. It's more so a rogue item than anything, but with Rocket Helm, sometimes you can get a Death Ray off. Um, oh yeah, and so... When I was doing these duels against Zero Two, getting some rogue practice, I realized that against rogues, in a 1v1 situation, stamina is actually pretty good, and obviously Greed and Wealth Armor is really good as well. So I have like a I have a gear set that is specifically for dueling rogues that I can switch to, which is higher in stamina and with Greed and Wealth Armor on. Um So let's see what else we got. Anything else I want to talk about? Skills. Um, if you didn't know, weapon skills, defense matters. Max all your weapon skills. You're going to get disarmed sometimes, so max unarmed as well, which takes a while. Defense is the most important one. You're going to get crit all the time if you don't have defense maxed. Uh, max that. And then max your staff skill. Uh, yeah, just max everything. Um, with the XP off, it's really easy to do. You can just kill whatever take damage from whatever. With EXP on, which you have to do in like vanilla, for example, like say you're level 19 twink and you need weapon skills, you can do it on easily on deep run rats in the deep run tram. They respawn pretty quick and you can get weapon skill off them. You can also get defense skill off them, but it takes a while. Mm -hmm. It's like these duels, I would like precast, rejuve, and regrowth. And then he'd wait out my regrowth and rejuve. And then I would try to shout him out. Originally, I wasn't shouting him out, just to not be like BM in quotes. Because there's like all kinds of ridiculous duel rules to try to make duels more fair and balanced. But if I don't shout him out, it's like almost a lost hope. Um, so sometimes I would try to shout him out. Shout him out. Um, yeah, I mean, the duels are whatever. You just gotta learn how to play your class. I'm just trying to figure out if there's any other... Make sure you get a mana bar on your druid so you have a mana bar visible when you're in other forms. Um, I'd recommend having a damage meter so you can check what's doing so much damage to you after you die. And you could be like, oh, shadow priests are broken. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I think that's basically everything I want to cover. I think I covered most things. Oh, engineering and herbalism in Wrath is what you use. Surprisingly... Alchemy, I think, is actually, like, really close to as good as Herbalism. 
So if you can't be bothered to level herbalism, I would recommend alchemy. The only reason for this is because spell power is really good on on um balanced druids. Like uh can I go over stat weights? I guess I could go over stat weights really quick. Um, but you get like 12 extra spell power from an arcane elixir as alchemy, and then you have that every single time you're live at all times. And so that 12 spell power actually starts to stack up pretty well against the lifeblood's 90 stamina every three minutes. Um, so yeah, if you want to if you want to be a hipster or if you just don't want to level herbalism, you can go alchemy because the extra spell power is really good. So I guess I can cover. Uh, just Biss and stat weights really quick. Um, I mean, this is just the Biss. I mean, you're never going to have this exactly equipped because you're going to have, like, gems to leather belt equipped. You're going to have rocket boots equipped sometimes. You're going to have different trinkets equipped. You're going to have, sometimes you're going to have green wealth armor if you're fighting, like, rogues or you think you might get opened on or something. Um, there's a, is there a spell pen on cloak? Cloak enchant might be spell pen, actually. I forget. I don't know why I have shadow res on here. Um, Green Lens of Healing is Abyss Helmet. This is just because spell power is so good on this class. Um, there are situations where you would want to use, I think, Miner's Head of the Deep. And then if you don't have that, it would be uh, Embalmed Shroud, I think. Um, one of the, 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 the tanky, tanky gear set has more mana as well. I forgot to mention that the so a lot of the games I start in a tankier gear set that, that is only like a third DPS and then two thirds kind of like hybrid DPS tanky. It's also like eagle gear that has some mana. So like these pants in my tanky set, instead of these, I'll be using necromancer leggings. A lot less spell power, but you get a lot more mana and some more stamina. Um, that's just one example. Um, so you can you you can. Yeah, I didn't explain this part. So if you start the game with a set that has more mana, it's like kind of eagle style of gear, then after you use that mana, especially as a night elf, once you drop combat, which you could do with shadow meld, you can shadow meld, drop combat, switch to your full DPS gear, and then you're still at max mana, even though you've cast 1,500 mana worth of spells. All right, just as some loose, um, um, what are these called? Stat weights. Um, if you didn't know, stat weights are the best way to determine... Um, if if a piece of how, if if one piece of gear is better than another, um, stat weights are completely dependent on situation, and they change depending on the situation. So obviously, if you're FCing, the stat weights are going to be much more favored towards stamina than spell power. So this is just kind of a you know averaged baseline that you can use as a you know balance druid that's mostly playing as a DPS. Now you're you, let me explain. I guess before I go into this. Your role as a balanced druid is a mid player. You can play defense, you can play offense, and you can play mid, but your best spot is in mid because people run by, you just dot them up. If people run by, you hot them up. Defense need helps, you go help defense. You, you, you can be a temp flag carrier for your defense if they die on like top of tunnel or something. Offense needs help, you can go on offense. Um, your standard position should be mid, but in public games, even in private games, most of the time you're going to be playing offense because not enough people play offense. But anyways, as a mid player, let's just say, say say your role in the game is mid. Um, these are rough stat weights. Spell power is a little bit better than stamina. I give it about 1.2 to 1. Armor, actually a pretty darn good stat. Quite high on armor. 40 armor is worth 1 stamina. Um... I don't think this is my newest numbers for my stat weights, but the important ones, like hit rating isn't even on here, so this is kind of old. But the important ones are stamina, spell power, resilience, and intellect. So resilience, a lot of people don't really know how to calculate that. It's not directly calculatable, but it's pretty close to calculatable. And it turns out to be about 0.65, which is quite good, actually. So, like, this gives, like, 12 resilience, for example. That's, like, 8 stamina, almost. Pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, if you uh, can't be fucked with stat weights, which you should be fucked, then the stat priority is spell power, stamina, resilience, intellect. And uh, yeah, you should not be living in 2006 if you uh, <laughs> are watching this video. <laughs> Just use fucking stat weights. Um, I, I don't have like all my gear sets. These are all just fucking random shit. Like I don't, I don't even think this is fully correct. Like, I think this cloak is wrong. I think there's like spell pen or something that I use instead. I don't fucking know. I also don't even know what the hit cap is in this goddamn expansion because there's so many like like racials that give you resistance and like then you got to decide like how important it is and then there's like consumables and shit on top of that. You know, thankfully there's not that many items with hit on it that you need to be worried about. Most of your hit just comes from uh, Staff of Jordan and Surefooted. Um, yeah. I think that's it. If you watch this whole thing, uh, congratulations to you. I hope you learned something. I'm not fucking... <laughs> I'm not planning on making some nice videos for this anytime soon, so this is what you get for now. Especially because I'm unsubbed. But maybe someday. Maybe uh maybe there'll be some more twinking in the future. I'll make some more twink videos, but this is what you gotta deal with for now. Hopefully I covered a lot of stuff. I'm sure it's not everything, but I mean how much can I cover? I mean fuck it. Did what I did. Did what I could do. Alright. Thanks for watching. Peace.